Hello everyone and welcome to this installment of the ESBC update. I'm Mike Terosian. And with me today is Jim Barrett from DRA. We have uh, Tim uh, Bonfatti from Compass and we have Mike Shepard from the ESBC meeting. So the ESBC committee. We now have uh, a meeting under our belt from last week and do we now have a construction manager? Uh, <coughs> what we've done is 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 we put out a, a request for proposals and we received um, I think seven proposals as I recall from construction managers. Um, we uh, went over the proposals and narrowed that down to four, um, three of which were actually submitted by the due date uh, we've interviewed the three, and we're in the, pro the selection process now. It'll be one of the three, so we're in uh, we're in really good shape. But, um, so, what are we looking for in in this construction manager? What, what well, kind of things? Well, what, what what do they do for the town? The construction manager is actually going to build this building, um, with the, the uh, under the direction of the architect Compass and the elementary school building committee. But the, the whole process of construction manager at risk is <clears throat> the, the value to it from our perspective being the community is the, the price is very controlled. Um, you pay them for this service, but what they do is they get on board early, and it's still relatively early in the process, and they work with the architect, and they try to realize cost savings for the town. Um, if something is specked out in the plans, it looks like it's going to cost more or put us over the budget. They discuss it with us, the elementary school building committee, and the architect, and hopefully find something and bring it back within budget. The whole idea is to build this school on, on time and on budget with no overruns. And uh, having this construction manager at risk, and that's it, the risk the price risk part, is yeah. his, um, he gives us this provides this guaranteed maximum price. So the advantage is get them on board early so they can work with the architect while the plans are still being uh, finalized so that we can um, make sure that we stay on target and whatever. And it, it, but it's also his firm that does right. the actual work. Sure, and his key responsibility is he works for the town That's right. in the town's interest keeping everyone honest, keeping the contractors in line, keeping and watching the dolls and getting any notification of any possible problems early enough to the board, to the architect, to anybody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Essentially that's yeah, Mike, if I can offer Please. Um, our, our firm works, you know, the gambit when it comes to public construction. Construction manager at risk offers kind of a proactive stance, if you will. It's the opportunity to have the builder partner early in the project to be able to identify options and alternatives relative to issues of constructability, issues of cost, as Mike was talking about, issues of schedule. And for us, it's having that additional teammate, if you will, going forward in the process. Well, it sounds like he has a lot to do. Absolutely. Which is outstanding. Now, is this going to be one person or part of a firm? Is it? You know, how does it work? It, it's part of a firm. Part of a firm. Um, and but we have one contact. We well, have one contact of the firm. And uh, they have a team. And as I recall, in, in speaker, the teams consisted of anywhere from five to seven members. And each one of those people on the team has a different role. Okay. Um, I just want to make it clear but, for everyone that they're not hiring one person. No, it's not one, one person. It, it, it's, it's, it's a firm. It's essentially, it's the construction company. So construction management risk came into being 10 years ago in the state. Yep. And it allowed towns to bring on what's been done in the private sector for the last 50 years, bring on a professional firm during the design phase, like Mike said, to provide these kind of input. Um, but they are the builder of the building. I mean, in the end, they'll have a cost commitment sure. and, a, and they're, they'll act as the general contractor when they're during the construction phase. So there's a site superintendent, an assistant superintendent, a project management team, you know, like any other traditional builder. Excellent. Well, a lot's happened since um, I last remember uh, the last meeting I was at, too, and, and talking about all the schematics now. How are we doing with the design stuff? Where, where are we at with design? Sure. Well. Um, Following on from schematic design, we're into a phase which is called design development. Um, 
will be in design development phase through end of February, uh, and at that point there'll be a reconciliation period for budgeting. Uh, that'll likely take through the month of March. Uh, but in this period, uh, what we're trying to do is define more clearly the decisions that were made during the schematic design phase. So, for instance, as we look at the site plan, uh, now we're getting into some fine tuning, if you will. You know, so in other words, so when you say the site plan, you're talking about you propose the shape of the building. Correct. And now you're going to say, well, this corner is not going to fit now. We make this. So those kind of adjustments. It's precisely that type of adjustment uh, relative to site uh, landscape, uh, architecture, civil, those types of decision making points. Uh, some of the things that they attend to have to do with uh, uh, parking, attendant play areas, uh, structured play areas, mm -hmm. uh, service to the site, separation of bus and parent drop off, you know, those types of things are really being fine tuned through this period of time. Ultimately, that leads us to the construction document phase, and at that point, Really, our hope is not to be fine-tuning any longer, sure. but really focusing on documentation for bidding and having that really come to the highest level possible. Right, because the more that you can get into that design, the more accurate your bids are going to be and the less yeah, correct. overages and so forth. What we want to ensure is that anybody bidding it is seeing the same thing. They're interpreting it identically if, at, at, at our best. And All the right. subcontractors that will be bidding on it. Correct. Yeah, it's not just, I mean, you have the overall contractor, but then the subcontractors are in on down. Right. Um, the, 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 if I might add, it, it's important to note that Jim's firm doesn't do this fine-tuning in a vacuum. He, he and the owner's project manager's team has been meeting with all the users of the facility, right down to the pre-K, K, first grade, the teachers, the administration, facilities. Uh, the meeting with facilities. Uh, just to make sure that the, the building that they end up with is actually the building they want. Down to the point where, you know, it, uh, the teachers want a specific kind of storage system and, sure. and all that. So, so when they get in there, they don't find, geez, where's all my closet? And, and all this stuff is being done right now. They meet every Wednesday, as I recall, yep. mm -hmm. and they meet for two, three hours, and they, they say, okay, here's what the plan looks like. What do you think? And they say, well, Jesus, I don't have enough storage. I don't like the layout. And it gets shuffled around um, in each one of these different areas, and uh, that's the process they're going through. Right. It isn't it, like they sit back and say, this is your school. Like we met with uh, Hopkinton Police last week or the week before and went through all the issues around security and how right. the, the site can be secure. Same thing with fire. So it's even even beyond Hopkinton schools, it's the broader Hopkinton community. Yeah. Right, it, it, there's no doubt who's, anybody who's followed this project from day one, yeah. know you get the public's input. Yeah. Are you still taking any more public input? Or are we pretty much done with that? I mean, there was a lot in the beginning to get us to where we are today. But are you still hearing anything from the public? We, we, we don't hear as much. We, off, we, we still afford everybody the op opportunity to, through Facebook. And, and as you know, we begin our uh, meetings and the, the public is public invited. Yep. I suspect at the end of this month, beginning of the next month, uh, we'll be reporting back to the public what we've found thus far. We're going to reach a point where the input is, is we're not going to be able to change stuff. Because sure. at, at the end, you know, important things have happened through the fall. The, the MSBA is, is parted, partnered with us. We've all signed the documents. The, the money is, is there when we need it. Um, town meeting, of course, has voted to support it. But at some point, you know, when you get down to the decisions, is, you know, you, you don't change anything anymore. Okay. And but we, the building committee, um, our intention is to keep everybody informed all the way through the process that's so that everybody knows today. what's yes. going on and uh, you know that that's the way it'll work just like in the past. If I could Mike, yeah. uh, we'd like to characterize the nature of the process as one of a dialogue you know it's to us that's an important aspect of the way design is done um, and it's that constant kind of interaction uh, the testing of an idea, bringing it back to the user groups, having them understand it, having them think about it. Uh, to the degree that um, <laughs> the other day I watched uh, one of our project designers leaving the office and was carrying a chipboard model mm -hmm. uh, of a mock-up of a storage 
uh, container. He had drawn it, they had modeled it on computer, etc. But the users were still questioning, do we have the heights right and whatnot? So by physically modeling it and building it out of paper chipboard, was able to take it out to the site, have students actually stand and see, does this fit our heights? And that's the type of, you know, interaction, that's the type of dialogue that we seek right. to be able to fine-tune decisions. That little extra service that you give saves a whole lot later yeah. well, <laughs> in the long run. <laughs> Absolutely. What, what is it, uh, you, you never have enough time to do it right the first time, but you always <laughs> have plenty of time to do it again? Absolutely. You know? right. Yeah, changing, changing a line on a, on a page is a whole lot easier sure. than after something's poured in concrete, trying to adjust right. it three inches. Now, you mentioned the, the weekly meetings and so forth. Is there a, a time limit for that to wrap up? Those will, uh, those? Well, at some point. Well, when are they wrapping up? I, I mean, the, those will continue, maybe not weekly, but certainly biweekly, all the way through till we get to weekly meetings during construction. I think probably as the design, um, you know, continues through where it's getting down to the granular pieces, where it's more the architect actually did making the details mm -hmm. work, it, it will become less frequent. Uh, but now with the construction manager on board, we'll be now integrating cost feedback from them into the meetings, which is, you know, currently we're, we're sort of working more on the design side. I do want to just make clear, because I think it's a very good point about public input. The building hasn't subst and won't substantially change from what people have seen, you know, from, from what they approved at town meeting. So the building, both, both layout and kind of general look, is going to be about the same. There's yeah, right, tweaks yeah, as you change, move through sure. design because you have to, but... Um, the MSBA, amongst other things, and it's not good design practice to sort of radically redo things during the rest follow on right. design, so they won't allow it anyway. So sure. we're, we're always, and it's important that we always feed back to the MSBA. Even when we do make smaller changes, we had to look at the bathrooms, for instance, to make sure they worked for the school. Um, we feed back to them what we're doing so that they know, because we report every, um, roughly every quarter or so, every design iteration back to them on how the design's coming. So right. I don't, you know, the design is basically the same design people saw at town meeting. Right, right, and all you're gonna see now from the models that you've been showing us, um, the fixtures may be different and, and maybe the, the color is a little different. Right. Those are yeah, minor, the real, the minor real, stuff. Yeah, the actual. Yeah. So documents. speaking yeah. of fixtures, I mean, I, when do we get to that page when you start picking fixtures and tiles and w when do you get to that point I, or is this the point now? This is the this, this is, is the period design development is the period where we look at an array of options and alternatives so you mentioned tile as an example uh, we're working with the uh, user groups we're working with the users of the facility to review you know uh, interior fit and finish and looking at options and alternatives in terms of how that might be applied um, our hope is that by the end of February that we'll, you know, pretty much draw that down to a close in terms of the general feel of the building will be known and we'll have that understanding and then be able to go into construction documentation in about a month's time after that where we can, as I said, simply begin the documentation process. What kind of cool things did you uh, you looking at now that you're hearing from you know your users sure what what kind of cool <laughs> things that w we can uh, expect to see in this building so far that you could if you can tell us now. yeah um, you know I, I think um, and it's it's not a dramatic change because as uh, uh, Tim indicates the building isn't about dramatic change at this point right. but it's the continued evolution of ideas uh, that we are constantly looking to kind of uh, push forward, uh, grow, and uh, build upon. You know, that's really our target. So the idea of taking the building and uh, being able to break it down for young users, make it understandable, understandable in ways where it's not an overwhelming large building, you know, that's one of the goals that was stated early on. It's yeah. something that in the feedback from MSBA that we heard, and it's something that as a, as a team, we're, we're totally on board with in terms of supporting. So to that end, you know, looking at everything from texture of uh, patterning to color to be able to support that idea of breaking down the building, having it become understandable and working in a way that kind of continually builds upon the same themes. Yeah, That's something I, that I we're really trying hard to do. I remember how you, I, th I thought it was unique 
um, how the sections of building building was for each grade and each mm -hmm. level and uh, each area of learning. Is that the norm now for schools, or is this something unique to Hopkins? Well, I. I mean, it will be unique to Hopkins because the other schools weren't built sure, like this. Absolutely. Um, what I'd suggest is the idea of it's re it's really creating neighborhood. You know, for for a young child to understand a complex building, uh, you kind of have to set it in terms that young children understand. And and you know, one of the tools that we use is employing you know a child's understanding of his or her community. So it's the idea of what's the neighborhood I grew up in? Where is downtown? Uh, gotcha. how, do I, how do I go out to see uh, some special activity that might be at town hall? And those kind of corollary, corollary uh, uh, pieces in the building might be, you know, their, their neighborhood is their cluster of classrooms, which is a small right. subset of the overall number of classrooms. Uh, downtown might be heading down to kind of the main core of the building. Uh, where you can find the library, the administration, the nurse's office, those types of things. Uh, heading to a special activity might be out to the cafeteria, out to the gymnasium as an example. So it's that sure. kind of understanding of a building that we're trying to support. That's no, outstanding. The uh, design, floor plan, everything looks great. and I'm looking forward to more. But speaking about, let's go outside again. Um, we still have the Tadaro property next to Yep. Uh, the, yep. the current location now, and we also have uh, EMC Park on the other side. Where are we at with the player? Are you working with Parks and Rec? <coughs> We're at, we, we've been working with Parks and Rec for probably uh, you know since the the beginning when we when we chose the site school and this location. Um, w w going through the whole process, we always wanted a, a secondary means of, of egress for emergencies and whatnot, if you would. But we thought because of the proximity of EMC Park to the school, <clears throat> the school would actually help EMC Park on those occasions throughout the spring and summer when they have baseball on Saturdays and nobody has any place to park, mm -hmm. they would be able to park at the school. And the school would be helped as well on those occasions when they have you know, the back to school night and it just seems like there's twice as many cars as right. there are kids, we'll have EMC to park. So there will be a connection between the park and, and the school. Uh, the park, from a, from a, it'll be pretty much a pedestrian connection for you and I and the average person. It'll be an emergency connection for fire and, and police if, it, if it's ever needed. So that the whole idea about these buildings is so that there's a loop entirely around the building so primary fire services can address an issue anywhere, anywhere. around the thing. Right. Um, there's not going to be a piece of the building that nobody can get to. So yes, we're working with Parks and Rec um, in determining where that little connection is going to be, what it's going to look like. Um, the um, selectmen, uh, I believe, at just the last meeting, um, appointed the the three at-large members of a subcommittee. They have studying what to do with the balance of the Irvine property as well as all of the Tadaro property. Um, <clears throat> just as a reminder for everyone, we we had we had intended. Um, this entrance, the, the entrance to the school, the access road, if you will, uh, we know that at, at some point it will be used for other things other than just the school. So we're designing the road um, with that in mind. That, that yes, you go up the road and you turn left and that's where the elementary school will be, but at some point there's going to be stuff on the right, which we don't have really any control of, but this subcommittee the selectmen put together will We'll come up with alternatives that could go there. So we we, we just don't want to redo the road again. So right. we're trying to think a little forward in in that regard. Now with the with this road, and we always mention the road like we've uh, always poorly mentioned the yeah. loop road the loop. at the other school. The loop road is not a road; it is a driveway. Yeah. Will this road be this road, a driveway? <laughs> uh, this, ro this road will be a road. It'll be a uh, it won't be a driveway. Okay. Uh, it'll be built to subdivision standards, uh, uh, just like any other road in town. Perfect. Uh, at some point, someday, it'll probably get accepted by the town, and it, it, so, when so we repairs can expect are a done, name yeah, for the road yeah, and everything. And, sure. and when repairs are done, they'll be done by the town. They'll use Chapter 90 funds. And are we going to be looking so. at Shepherd Drive? Or no, something? that's <laughs> probably not the case. No? But okay. yeah, they, it'll it'll have some name. It's somebody sure. way more qualified than way I will select, okay. and. Uh, 
And uh, so we're working to that end too. And and well, while we've been, the elementary school building committee has been concentrating on what our charge is. The selectmen in the background are, are, are putting together this team to figure out what they're going to do with the rest, if anything. And speaking with the road and slash the the road. Yeah. Are you at any point right now you can give a hint of what's going to happen out on Hayden Row by this road? What what do we look at? We look at turning lanes <coughs> yeah, on both it, sides, it, 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 widening, shortening. Roughly, it, 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 say coming from the Milford direction, yeah. uh, the road will be widened slightly so that a vehicle turning to the right, a, a vehicle on the throughway could go straight through. So you wouldn't get hung up for a vehicle turning in from the right, say from Cornell. Sure. Um, coming from the other direction, the road will be widened as well so that there'll be like a middle lane to turn left and you'll be able straight to go by to the right. right to go straight. We try to avoid the, the, the bottleneck, if you will. And there'll be some kind of signalization there. We haven't, you know, cut down to the, the brass tacks as to how that will work. Uh, but there'll be crosswalks and, you know, the, um, hopefully the, our intent is to, to help resolve the, the bottlenecks further up the road. Um, and and yeah, similarly, please. Mike, once you're off Hayden Row and into the site, uh, the throat of the, the drive uh, will be a three-lane uh, throat. So we have a dedicated exiting right-hand turn, a dedicated exiting left-hand turn, and an ingress yeah. lane dedicated separately. That will keep flow moving as well, uh, particularly as you're exiting the site looking to take a left-hand turn. I, and I know this is outside the scope of the ESBC, but will the town be jumping on board at time of this construction, maybe to do those uh, proposed changes down the street at the Hopkins and High School entrances? <clears throat> One would hope. One would hope, because it would Again, be great to get it all. It's clearly outside our scope. But right. I, I was just wondering if you heard I anything. suspect that whole issue will Something be revisited. Something we could share with our viewers. Be a That'll first. be revisited probably sooner than later, I suspect. Right. I, I remember Westling came across even before um, the ESBC committee was even formed. Yeah. They were looking at all sorts of ways to divert uh, the turning lanes and, and to slow calming. things down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they were looking at all that. I was just, uh, I'm hoping that would be a great addition because if they do put in a traffic another traffic light up there somewhere yeah. you know whether it's in the high school Hopkins or yeah. Yeah. a new elementary school it'd be nice to uh, be all done at the yeah, same time. Yeah I think time. everybody realizes that traffic is, is, is <coughs> an issue. Our, our piece of it hopefully we'll be able to handle um, right. and we don't want to contribute to the, the further burden you know ideally these kids you know go to school earlier and get out later so yeah. they won't have that same middle school Hopkins uh, High School. Uh, and we're gonna and we're gonna see some relief down to at the center of town as well. Actually, yeah, you know, we won't yeah. have the issues we have on. You'll be able Street to park at the so. Common. Yeah, that's for a change. Right. Uh, that's never right. been able to do that during the school year. So, yeah. um, anything else that we didn't touch base on uh, from the last meeting? No, we've, we've you know a lot has been accomplished in the last few months, and um, and. Uh, you know, as I said before, the the state has partnered with us to the point where documents are signed. Yep. Um, we 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 have a, a a relatively good set of plans that everybody is familiar with. We're fine tuning those, but everybody has to know that we don't get to change big stuff because the state right. has already bought into our schematic. Um, um, so we're hoping to to move right along and get some portion of the the site work done you know, in the fall and, and into construction next winter, spring. And we'll meet the deadline of uh, September 2018. That's outstanding. And the kids will be going to a new school. That is outstanding. And uh, what a big change for this town. It's, it's huge. Um, and I just can't wait for a new beautiful building. Yeah, that would so, be gorgeous. That's yeah. great. And then, then someday we can talk about what to do with center school, right? <laughs> that, that'll, be, that'll be a different committee. I'm sure you that. still have all those questions being <laughs> yeah. thrown. What's going to happen to the old school? Yeah. I get no, that. that'll, be a, that'll be a big issue, and the selectmen have promised stuff that they'll yeah, address that. Absolutely. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Anything else, Tim? Jim, anything? You got it? No, I don't think there's good? anything additional well, to listen, Guys, thank you very much for coming out. We're going to be back doing this every month now because yep. your next meeting is February 8th yep. at the town hall at the lower level. That's correct. And 6.30 
p.m. And everybody is welcome to come. Come on down. More uh, than merrier. And so we'll be we'll be doing this here on a regular basis since the meetings aren't televised because yeah. they're more like a working session meetings now yeah. where you sit around in a big circle and, Not and hammer, hammer out the nuts and bolts. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, excellent. Thanks again for coming out today. Yeah. And everyone, if you need to know more about the Elementary School Building Committee, visit their website, see their Facebook page. Plenty of information on there. And feel free to send them an email, ask any questions that still they want to hear from you. Okay. So for, uh, for here at HCAM in the Elementary School Building Committee update, I'm Mike Terosian. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.